Okay guys, so I'm going to keep plugging away on this lecture about halogenated hydrocarbons. No wiki had to go. Um, so I was just talking about biomagnification. I want to remind you about what biomagnification is. So biomagnification is the increase in concentration of pollutants in an environment up the food chain. Uh, so, so here's the deal, right, is there's less and less energy available at each trophic level of a food chain. And that is because uh, energy is lost at each level. But what happens is with persistent organic pollutants or heavy metals or something like that, the energy is lost, so there's less organic matter available at each trophic level in order to have, um, you know, in order to create organisms. But the problem is, is that the persistent organic pollutants or the heavy metals or anything like that, the biomagnifier, bioaccumulate, they don't break down. So what happens is, is um, you have the same amount of heavy metal or persistent organic pollutant, but you have less organisms to spread it across. So if it, if, you know, uh, DDT, for example, gets into a, a water uh, supply, it might not exist in high concentrations in the phytoplankton, but then the zooplankton eats the phytoplankton, and there's less zooplankton avail present than phytoplankton, but the same amount of DDT gets transferred into this trophic level. So now there's the same amount of DDT spread across less organisms. And then this all happens in succession as we move up the food chain. So once you get to the top of the food chain, there's very few organisms to spread the um, persistent organic pollutants around, but there's still the same amount of that present at this trophic level. So it ends up concentrating in apex predators. So that's what happens with biomagnification. Um, so we need to be aware of that when we're talking about dealing with halogenated hydrocarbons because they don't break down in natural ecosystems. So we're going to discuss how halogenated hydrocarbon reactions even occur. So they occur mostly by addition reactions. So there's three main types of addition, ad addition reactions you need to know about. Hydrohalogenation, halogenation, sorry, hydrogenation, halogenation, and hydrohalogenation. So addition reactions occur when a halogen or a hydrogen halide, so something bonded to hydrogen, a halogen bonded to hydrogen, is added to an unsaturated hydrocarbon, so a double or triple bond, to produce an organic halide. So we go from making an alkene or an alkyne and turn it into an alkane by bonding halogens onto it. So double or triple bonds are much more unstable than single bonds, so that is why they are the site of addition. So polar molecules that are created will dissolve in polar substances, which is important to understand, and nonpolar molecules dissolve in nonpolar substances. So let me give you some examples of this. So let's say we have I'm just going to draw skeleton equations here. Okay, so let's say we have but1ene and hydrogen, H2 gas, and we're going to we're going to hydrogenate this. So we're going to add hydrogen. We're going to turn butene into butane. So this turns into butane, right? So that's an example of hydrogenation. Okay, here's another example of hydrogenation. So I can also take an alkyne. Okay, so this is uh, propine plus excess H2. So we're going to use enough H2 to break up all these bonds. Okay, and then this is going, so when we say excess with these, we're meaning take the alkyne or the alkene to an alkane. So you use as much hydrogen as necessary to break up all the double and triple bonds.
So if I use excess hydrogen, I can turn this into propane. So this is hydrogenation. Okay, so those are hydrogenation reactions. <clears throat> now, um, let's look at halogenation. So it's similar, but rather than adding hydrogens, okay, we add halogens. Okay, so let's say we have this. Ethene. Okay, uh, plus Cl2, so chlorine gas. Okay, um, and we can turn this into a saturated hydrocarbon with chlorine attached to it now. Right, and this would be 1,2-dichloroethane now. A N E, not E N E, right? Okay. Uh, likewise, I can do this with ethene. Okay, so ethene plus bromine, so excess bromine. Right, so in this case, I'd need two Br. In order to do this, 2Br2, I should say. And we end up um, With that, right? One, two, dibromoethane. Okay. Um, now, this is a rare occurrence where we can use the excess to add halogens. Okay, so usually what ends up happening with halogenation is we add halogens one by one, and then that reacts with H. Okay, so that's a very rare occurrence. So what happens with halogenation normally is, let's go back to this molecule. plus the Br2, what will normally happen here is this. So I'll substitute one um, of these molecules out. Okay. And um, we'll end up with H2 gas being produced. Okay. Um, but I'm not I'm not normally gonna take the I'm not normally gonna take the with halogenated hydrocarbons, I'm not normally gonna take the alkyne and turn it right into an alkane it would take two steps. So plus Br2 again. Okay, so that would normally happen in two steps. It wouldn't happen in one big step like you could with hydrogenation. It just doesn't work as easy, okay? 
and that's because of the polarity of the halogen molecules. All right. Um, okay, guys, uh, I've got someone to help me now, so I'm going to turn it over to my to my camera person here, and then I'm going to do the rest of the lecture on the board. Thanks. Okay, so uh, we talked about uh, hydrogenation, and we talked about um, halogenation. I want to talk about hydrohalogenation now. Okay. So, uh, with hydrohalogenation, here's what we, we've got. So let's say we've got this. Uh, Um, propene, so this is a propene molecule. Um, plus uh, a hydrogen halide, so HCl, for example, hydrogen chloride. So this would be a gas, so this would be HCl gas, it wouldn't be hydrochloric acid. Um, we could produce this, so we take this and turn it into a saturated hydrocarbon. where you could end up with 2-chloropropane uh, or you could end up with 1-chloropropane. You could end up with either or, all right? Now, let's say this was 2-HCl, it would end up being both of these. Okay, so you just manipulate the, the temperature and the pressure of the reaction to determine where the chlorine goes. Okay, so um, examples. Um, so those are base examples, but let's look at some actual word problems here. Let's say we've got butene uh, plus fluorine. So here's what this looks like. It's going to be Bute1-ene plus F2 gas, right, and these are all hydrogens. Um, what happens here uh, is the fluorine goes to each part of the double bond. So you're going to break up the double bond to saturate that hydrocarbon. And then you'll have a fluorine here, a fluorine here. And you'll end up with one, two, Difluorobutane, uh, right? A and E now because it's now saturated. Um, let's say. So again, these are addition reactions. So we're taking unsaturated hydrocarbons and turning them into saturated hydrocarbons. Okay, so we take the alkenes and the alkynes, which are unsaturated, and turn them into saturated hydrocarbons, which are alkanes. Um, all right, so let's say we've got this. Let's say we have this two. Uh, again, butene one in again, we're going to have two of them, plus two HBr. All right, so this is uh, hydrohalogenation, all right? So I have the hydrogen and the halogen that are going to be added here, and I can make isomers. So one's going to end up like this, and then one will end up with the bromine on carbon two. Okay, um, and then you'd end up with two, uh, one bromobutane and two bromobutane. Okay. 
Um, another thing that we can look at, I'm just going to pull my notes up here. You need to know the difference between when we talk about equimolar amounts with these reactions and excess. Okay, so you guys have already seen this slide. But again, this is hydrohalogenation, where you add a hydrogen halide to an unsaturated molecule. Now these addition reactions, as I'm stating here, can be equimolar or happen with excess reactants. So equimolar is the same amount of moles of hydrocarbon reacting with hydrogen gas or halogens. And so what's going to happen here is you, these are, the halides or the hydrogen gases are essentially limiting reagents. So I'm not going to remove all the double or triple bonds. And then with, when we have excess, enough hydrogen or, hal or halogens will react to remove all the double or triple bonds and turn it into single bonds. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to substitution reactions. Um, so let me show you. A few examples of this. So let's say we have aquamolar amounts of bute, one, ion, and chlorine. Okay? So, what I have is this. Uh, plus Cl2 gas. So, I'm going to have one chlorine go here and one chlorine go here. Uh, but I'm still going to, at the end, I'm still going to have a double bond because only one of these bonds has been removed, right? Um, and bonded with the chlorine. So if we look at the products here, So remember, there's one, two, three, four bonds on this carbon, and there's one, two, three, four bonds on this carbon. So I still have a double bond. So I'll end up with one, two, dichlorobutone. So that's equimolar. Now let's say we have. Normally, this would happen in two stages, as I pointed this out. Let's say we have bute 2 ion plus Cl2 excess. So we have enough of it to remove all the double and triple bonds and turn them into single bonds. So if I look at this guy, so that's bute 2 ion. Okay, plus Cl2 gas in excess. I have to remove one bond and two bonds, right? So that's going to take two Cl2 molecules to do that. So what we create, end up creating is, right, if we look at the first molecule, um, I'm going to end up making... something like this, and then we can add Cl2 again, and then we turn it into an unsaturated hydrocarbon. And you'll have Cl removing where the double and triple bonds are eventually. But this would happen in two stages, but this would be your net reaction. 
So your net reaction would be this, right? I'd end up with two hydrogen gases removed because I've removed a hydrogen from all of these. Um, and this would be uh, uh, 2, 2, 3, 3, butane. Okay, once I've um, reacted all that in excess. Okay, so you need to know the difference between equimolar and excess. Excess will take the double or triple bond all the way down to the single bond. Okay? All right, so last little piece here with halogenated hydrocarbons, and then I'll end this lecture, um, our substitution reactions. So substitution reactions involve the replacement of hydrogen or another atom in an alkane. So this is key. Substitution happens in saturated hydrocarbons. Uh, or in an aromatic ring. So benzene rings are considered saturated because their hydrogen, their electrons are all shared equally. With a different atom, in this case a halogen, in order to make a halogenated hydrocarbon. So substitution happens in more than just halogenated hydrocarbons, but what we're doing is, is we're swapping out molecules that are in saturated hydrocarbons. So light is usually a necessary catalyst. We use ultraviolet, and we'll use heat or acid catalysts as well to help make this happen. So we'll make a halogenated hydrocarbon, and then we'll make a hydrogen halide as a product. You might get isomers from this, and you'll have to separate them. Um, the aromatic or the benzene rings don't change. All we do is swap out the hydrogens. You can have second and third substitutions, but here's the deal, is you can only replace one hydrogen at a time. So that would require multiple reactions in order to replace more than one hydrogen at a time. So let's look at how this works. Okay, substitution reactions. Um, your general formula for what you'll see in Chem 30 is going to be an alkane or an aromatic hydrocarbon plus a halogen. And then that's going to react with UV or catalysts to make an organic halide. Okay, so that's your functional group for that, uh, plus a hydrogen halide. So H whatever the, hal the halogen is going to be. Okay. So um, let's look at this one. C3H8 plus Br2 uh, makes CH3, sorry, C3H7, Br, and that'll be a liquid, plus HBr. So I can only swap, because the bromines and the hydrogens can't exist as single ions, you can only swap one hydrogen with a halogen at a time. So that's really what this is showing here. So I'm going to end up with so this is propane. Right? Plus Br2. And then this is going to end up making those as products, right? So I'll have uh, two bromopropane propane here plus uh, hydrogen bromide, and that'll be a gas. Okay, 
Now, um, if I wanted, so let's say the question says, show all isomers. Okay, well the other isomer is going to be a bromine, right, that ends up on a carbon one. And I would need to have, so I can only swap one at a time, so I would make two HBr molecules, so I would need two Br2s, right? Um, because if I'm going to remove a hydrogen, I have to put it on a bromine molecule, so I would need two, I would need two Br2 molecules in order to make both isomers. Okay. Um, so let's right, let me give you two examples. Let's say we have propane. Uh, and iodine, and this is excess. Okay, so I have uh, a saturated hydrocarbon plus I2. So excess means show all isomers. Okay, so I would need this, and then I would make a propane molecule with iodine and then another one with iodine on a different um, carbon. So if I've removed, if I've added a, um, an iodine, then I've uh, removed a hydrogen. So I'll make two I2, uh, HI2 molecules, or two HI molecules, sorry. Okay, because only one of each can go. Right, so one will go here, and then an H comes back. And the other one will go here, and an H comes back to that. Okay, so we swap them out, but we swap them out one by one. Um, now let's say we have this. One mole of ethane. And two moles of iodine. So this is, is it equal molar or not? We have to consider this. And I have two I2. So I'm only I only have one mole of this, so there's there's not two isomers. So it's telling me specifically how many I have. So if I look at this molecule, um, I'm going to add, so remember this is I and I, okay? So an iodine is going to remove a hydrogen and a hydrogen is going to come back, and an iodine is going to um, remove a hy hydrogen and then the hydrogen is going to come back. So with one mole of this, I end up... with this plus two HI. So I didn't make both isomers because there's only one mole of the ethane present. Okay, so knowing your mole ratios in here is, is important. Um, practice questions for this stuff. Page 422, number six through 11. And then page 424, numbers one through four. Okay. So you can see, th these are in my notes, so these show substitution reactions. So again, uh, this shows benzene, but what it shows is benzene plus chlorine gas, this is an iron chloride catalyst plus ultraviolet radiation. You can only add halogens one at a time because you have to remove the hydrogen. And that's what this shows here. So I have two moles of propane, so therefore I can make two isomers, but one bromine goes over and a hydrogen comes to the bromine that's left over. 
and then the other Br2 molecule can make the isomer. So I only, I only add them one at a time with substitution reactions. Right? Addition uses alkenes and alkynes, so it's different. So some reactions require more than one step to synthesize a product. I showed you that with building uh, an alkane from an alkyne, uh, converting it into an alkene first. Page 423, take a look at this. Sometimes we have to break molecules down again to build them back up. Um, polyvinyl chloride, or PVC pipe, is made by retrosynthesis. It's on page 423 of your textbook, but we're not really going to focus on it much. I just want you to look over it and be aware of the term. You're not, you might not necessarily be tested directly on it, though. Okay, so I'm going to end this lecture here. That's all you need to know for halogenated hydrocarbons. Alcohols and carboxylic acids will come in a separate lecture.